Hello, and thank you for joining me. In this video, we will be demonstrating the Dynaware POS system as it relates to a bar or nightlife environment. Dynaware software is the easy-to-use POS system that offers the flexibility to manage your business your way. The Dynaware software was designed with three main principles in mind. In the left-hand corner of the screen, we have listed these principles. They are ease of use plus high reliability equals a low cost of ownership. The basic premise of Dynaware is that restaurant owners should be able to manage the system themselves and not require a lot of technical help. That's a little background on the Dynaware point of sale system. Now let's get started with the demo. The most important feature on the front page of the software is the 10 key pin pad. Each employee will have a unique four digit pin or we can use magnetic swipe cards. They will use these to log into their account. This will also function as their time clock, so you can very easily pull a payroll report with the employee's hours worked, as well as how much they are owed. So to clock in, we will enter our PIN number, then select the job we are performing for that shift. If you have employees that perform different jobs for different shifts, you can assign those jobs and adjust the pay rates for each to ensure that the payroll report is accurate. I will select manager for this shift. Once we are logged in, we will see our order entry screen. Down the middle of the screen, we have all of our different menu categories. And within each of those categories, we have all of our individual menu items. This menu screen can be completely customized to each individual restaurant's menu and can be changed as frequently as needed in just a couple of minutes. You can see under appetizers, I have all of my appetizers, under sandwiches, all of my sandwiches, and so on. You can have as many of these different screen categories as you'd like, and these can be customized to reflect your restaurant's menu. Once we select a menu item, you can associate a list of modifiers or choice sets to that item. These are gonna be any modifications that we might make to that menu item. We will go through some specific scenarios in a moment, but these choice sets can either be made mandatory, like this one here, a mandatory choice set requires the server to make that choice before they are able to send that order to the kitchen. These choice sets can also be made optional. We can have a choice with upcharge. We can even have a choice within a choice. So when I select this choice, it actually prompts me for a sub-choice set. So really, any modification or upcharge can be accounted for within the software. So that's a little bit about how the menu is structured. Now let's run through a few common transaction scenarios. One feature of having and operating on a POS system is that it makes it very easy to open and manage bar tabs. Rather than hanging on to the customer's card all night, we can actually swipe it right there on the side of the terminal. You can see I have my system set to pre-authorize for $25. We can adjust this amount or we can turn this function off. However, this function ensures the card is at least good for this amount. And you can see it opens up a tab with the person's name on it. Now let's cover FastPay. The FastPay feature allows few touches on the screen so your servers can help guests more quickly. If a customer walks up to the bar and orders a drink, we'll tap that item, which is one touch, Bud Light. With that one touch, the system opens the ticket, and down at the bottom of the screen, you can see our FastPay keys populate. Those totals adjust depending on the total of the check. So if they hand us a $5 bill, We'll select the five. Our change due will pop up in big bold letters and the cash drawer would open at that time. So again, that's two touches, Bud Light, $10, and we've helped a customer. So you can really see how that would move a busy bar line along. Now let's go over creating a ticket for a table. We'll tap on the new ticket button at the bottom of our screen, which will prompt us for our table selection. We can adjust this layout as necessary. We can change the size, shape, and position of the tables. We can also have as many different sections as we'd like. At this point, we need to select a table. Let's choose bar table one. And then we choose the number of guests. Let's select two guests. Here we do have the option of putting in a custom name, for example, a last name or a shirt color but you do have to be careful because that will end up on the guest check. I'll select OK and you can see 
Here's bar table one for two guests. All right, let's go ahead and give them some food and some drinks. So let's go ahead and do a Bud Light. And then how about a glass of wine? And then let's give them some food as well. So how about the wings here? Again, when I do choose my wings, here's one of those required choice sets or modifiers that I have to make before I can send this order to the kitchen. Let's go ahead and choose buffalo. And then we do have an optional choice set, which is dip. Let's go ahead and choose blue cheese. And then how about the burger? Again, here I do have to choose a temperature for the meat. We'll choose medium rare. And let's go ahead and add bacon and tomato to this, but no mayo or lettuce. You can see that the system really does account for any modification. It has upcharged accordingly for the bacon. When I hit OK, the drinks will print off at the bar. The food's going to print out in the kitchen. And if I want to modify this ticket at all, I'm just going to tap it back open. If a new person joins the party, I'll come down here to the New Person button. That'll add a third person onto the table. Let's go ahead and give them some drinks and some food as well. And then if the first two guests would like another round of drinks, we'll simply highlight those items and press this Repeat button. And that'll tack on another round or maybe even two. Again, when I press OK, those new items will print out at the selected printers. If they're ready to pay, I'll simply tap it back open. If they all want separate checks, that's no problem. I'll come down here to my split ticket button. This is going to give me every single way I can possibly split the ticket. I can select certain people from the party by highlighting them and split them on to one ticket. I can highlight certain people from the party and split them off onto their own tickets, or I can select to have everyone placed on their own ticket. I'll choose that. And you can see now for bar table one, we do have three separate checks. If I want to go ahead and pay one of these out, I'll come down here to my pay button, tap that, and that brings me to my pay screen. You can see down this side, I do have some fast pay keys. In the middle, I can enter a specific amount. And these fraction keys down the side are used in the case when they give us multiple credit cards and they just want it split evenly amongst those cards. So if they give us three credit cards, I'll press the one third button. The system will do the math for me and will run each card for $6.21. We can also pay with multiple tender types. If they give us a 10, We'll tell the system 10 cash, and then we'll make another payment. We can slide the card at that time, confirm our sale, and you can see this check has been paid in full, but we do still have the opportunity to add a credit card tip. If it's a busy shift and I'm not adding my tips on until the end of the night, I'll come down here to the Hide Authorize button, hide all of those closed checks waiting for a tip. I can focus on my open tables, and then at the end of my shift, I'll come down here to this Hide Authorize button, and I can go back in and enter my credit card tip. Two dollars, enter tip, finalize. And now we've closed that checkout. That's how a standard table service would work. Let's go over a few other options we have in this front screen. List view is another way to view our tickets. In this view, we have a couple other options. We can combine tickets by highlighting them and pressing combine. That'll combine all of those tickets into one. We can also transfer tickets. So if my shift is ending but I have a table that's not ready to leave yet, I'll go ahead and transfer this ticket to Sally. She can take care of the rest of that party. I can go ahead and end my shift. I do that by coming up to my personal page here. Here I do have the option of seeing a detailed shift report. I can print that off right on the side of the terminal. Then I can clock out. It's going to ask me for my adjusted tips, which are cash tips. Known tips are going to be all of the credit card tips I received. So I'll go ahead and enter my cash tips and press clock out. That'll bring me back to the front page of the software where the next employee can clock in or log in as needed. 
So that covers all of our ordering scenarios. Now we will go over some of the management functionality. To enter into the manager screen, I will tap on the manager button at the top of the screen. This is our back office manager screen. Here is where we can update our menu, add or edit employees or jobs, set up any discounts, and run all of our reports. Back here we do use complete sentences for each description, which makes it very simple to decipher where you need to go to accomplish each task within the software. Let's first go to the Employees tab, so we can see how we can customize the security settings for each employee. Here's where we create a new employee. We will go ahead and just edit one of our current employees as an example. All we have to do is give that employee a screen name and a PIN number, which can be four or six digits long, or we can use a magnetic swipe card. On the right here is our security settings, where we can pick and choose who has access to what parts of the system. So if we want to take discounts or voids away from an employee, we would simply uncheck those boxes. Now, if that employee tries to access those functions, the system will prompt them to enter a manager's PIN. So we can really make the system as secure as we need by limiting the different options here. Now we've covered the employee, let's go to our discount section. We can have as many different discounts as we would like. We can also very quickly activate or deactivate these as needed. To create a new discount, we will tap on the new button at the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and create a Thursday happy hour. So here is where we put our discount name in. Next we will choose if we want to apply this discount to the entire ticket or if we will just be applying it to certain items. I can select groups of items to apply this discount to or I can select specific items from the menu. Let's go ahead and select our appetizers for the happy hour. Next we need to decide how we want to discount this item. We can force a price, maybe $5 for all of our appetizers during that happy hour. We can take an amount off, so maybe $2 off our appetizers, or we can take a percentage off, maybe half off our appetizers. Let's go ahead and take $2 off our appetizers. And then we can apply this discount automatically or manually. Let's apply this automatically. Next, we choose the days and times that this discount will be applied. So maybe this discount is only available on Thursdays between the hours of 6 a.m. and 4 p.m. I'll select OK here. And then when I go back out to my front screen and select an appetizer, you can see that that's been discounted automatically. Any change that you make in the system happens in real time. No need to restart the system or reboot. And you can make that change from any terminal within the restaurant. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our reports. Within the software we do have over 85 reports. These are broken down into sections such as sales, product mix, as well as labor. First let's take a look at our payroll report. Any of our reports can be pulled up from any time period that we like. I can look at the last five hours if I'd like or even the last five minutes. The system never dumps any information so I can pull any report since the moment the software was installed. So here's my payroll report with all of my employees, the jobs that they've performed, their hours, any tips that they have earned, and here's total pay and total tips. Any of the reports within the system we can save in any of these formats below. So we do have quite a bit of flexibility managing our reports and making sure they get to the right place. Next, let's look at our item cells, alphabetical. Again, let's pull this up month to date. Here are all of the items I've sold in alphabetical order with the price, the quantity, and net sales. Next, let's take a look at our restaurant financial overview here. This is a great quarterly report. Here we have our gross sales by revenue class. This also records any discounts we might have given. We also have our tax information here. Net sales by day part. This records all of our voids as well. All of our tips. 
and then some handy statistics down at the bottom. For example, head count, net per head. We even have our labor percentage down here. So that's the reporting section. Now let's take a look at our daily report tab. This is where we see our sales for the day. This is very similar to a Z report on a cash register. This can be printed right on the receipt printer and placed into our deposit. This report, just like any of our reports, can be pulled up from any period of time that we'd like. That's everything that we'll cover in the demo today. Please see our list of videos for demos on table service, quick service, as well as more specific demos on the loyalty program, splitting a check, using the coursing feature, and more. If you'd like to schedule a personalized demo, you can do that at dinerware.com and request a demo. Thanks so much for joining me today, and good luck with your business.